This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something different. How many laptops have a handle? You've probably seen rugged laptops before. This is the Panasonic Toughbook 55, specifically FZ-55. This is what they call their semi-rugged laptop. So that means it's not as super chunky and super heavy as a fully rugged laptop. Their version of that is the Model 31. But still, this is it's not just about the ruggedness, though it's pretty impressive that it's as rugged as it is, given that it's not that huge a 14-inch Ultrabook, but it's the modularity, something that I think a lot of you aren't that familiar with and that's something that it stands apart still I mean Dell has gone and made some rugged latitudes particularly a latitude tablet that we looked at but this modularity on this is just amazing we're gonna look at it now all right, so let's get a handle on this system. Sorry, I couldn't resist it. So yes, it's a laptop. We've heard of things like removable batteries. Lenovo has been doing that for quite some time. You've seen the removable optical drive. That used to be more of a thing, like in multimedia and gaming laptops. Now optical drives are going away, but that's what this is. This is a removable Blu-ray. But look at this stack of components here. All of these are just a slide a latch, slide them in and out. Pretty much every side of this laptop has modular bays that you can put in. Things like you need to double the battery capacity there's your 68 watt hour battery you need a fingerprint scanner there's a module for that there's an RFID module there you need different ports for example these are VGA with Ethernet maybe you say hey I'm modern I need HDMI yes there are port modules for that sort of thing it's it's, it's crazy right and the one large bay which is the one that is the optical drive size bay can hold a second SSD for example because it's got the fastest data connection so all the the drives will go into that main bay even if they don't need that much space because this uses m.2 SSDs and also there's an optional AMD Radeon GPU granted it's an AMD Radeon WX and it's not you know super fast this is still a 14 inch ultrabook so you're not going to be looking at something like gamerific or CAD jockey level, but it's enough to be three times faster than the integrated graphics on this. And again, it's modular. You swap it in when you need it, you swap it out when you don't. So for a lot of you, this is probably something you've not seen before. Like I said, beyond the optical drive and the battery bay on some laptops of a couple of years ago, but this complete customization is really interesting. And obviously, the Toughbook is mostly for vertical markets. Companies buy these and deploy folks into the field. Uh, depending on the level of ruggedness, the military might get the Toughbook 31, which is the fully rugged model. Or if you just you're not doing quite as much, say you're working in oil and gas or whatever it is, even. Uh, folks who are ins inspecting construction sites, then probably this one, the 55, is sufficiently rugged for you. And you can make it whatever it is that you need for your folks who are going out in the field. Interesting concept, isn't it? Despite the fact that it is modular and all that sort of thing and pretty rugged, it's not that thick and that heavy for a rugged laptop. It range, ranges from 4.6 to 4.9 pounds in the thickness. Well, you can see it. It's not skinny, but it's not like the mega suitcases of old for rugged laptops. It's IP53 rated for water and for dust. So before you go, oh my God, my dainty little Galaxy S20 is IP68. Keep in mind, phones are a lot easier to waterproof and dustproof because they have one port these days, the USB-C port, and they don't have ventilation ports everywhere, let alone these modular accessories that plug in and out. So that's pretty good. The Toughbook 31, the more rugged model is IP65 rated, but it's also rated for all sorts of physical abuse. So with the Toughbook 31, for example, they show it being dragged behind an ATV on a chain over rugged terrain that looks about as hospitable as Mars. So you get the idea. Now, rugged laptops aren't cheap. You could probably have guessed that already. Starts around $2,500. You can get a Core i5 model for that, and you can go to town and spend even more money. And for the module pricing, it really depends on which module it is, how much it's going to cost you. Inside, we have Intel 8th generation Ultrabook 15 watt CPUs. I'm no doubt now that vPro CPUs are available in 10th gen, they'll probably be doing a refresh, but these are vPro because businesses tend to like vPro. You can get an i5, i7 CPU inside with Intel UHD 620 graphics, but again, you have that AMD module should you need to have a little more graphical oomph. You got two RAM slots on here, nice for a 14 inch Ultrabook, and as you would expect, it should be serviceable and upgradable, this kind of product. And there's a second door on the bottom that gives you access to both the Wi Fi card, which is a 9560 AC. Wi-Fi 5 card on this. Again, that'll probably get up to Wi-Fi 6 with the next revision. And there's also the optional 4G LTE model, which is a Snapdragon 
CAT 16 LTE module. So that's accessible as well, and that's an option that you can get with it if you need the 4G LTE. Now, the displays on this, you can go with just the HD, i.e. 720p non-touch display if you want. But if you say, hey, I'm no Luddite, I want better than that, you can get a full HD display that supports touch, surprisingly. And also, surprisingly, compared to rugged laptops of old that had very res low resolution, grainy uh, displays, the full HD touch model that we have is pretty nice looking and fairly sharp. You have two display options. We have the brighter one, which is the 1000 nits, so it's meant for outdoor workers, that sort of thing. And it is insane bright. It didn't quite hit a thousand nits in our colorimeter testing, but hey, when you're pushing close to 900, I think that is sufficient. Color accuracy on it and color gamut, not really good. That's not the target audience here. Obviously, you know, the next Picasso in digital drawing is not going to be buying one of these. It's fine to look at. I think most business users look, using this thing are not going to complain about the way the display looks, but no, it's not wide gamut or anything like that, but it's pretty decent looking. It's a little glossy, there's a little bit of reflection for you outdoor working types, but it's not super glossy. Performance on this is where you would expect it to be for this class of CPU and nothing really to see here. It's just like it's non-rugged brethren that have the same internals, which is to say it's quite competent for most everyday work. If you throw in that AMD GPU, it gives you a little extra oomph if you're doing some 2D CAD work probably. That's more what it's geared towards. Heat and noise on this, really, it's pretty darn quiet, and it's so thick, the chassis, you're not going to ever feel any heat. The keyboard on this, we haven't seen an emissive backlight for a long time, but it's got a green emissive backlight on the keyboard, which is actually pretty easy on the eyes and sort of has that retro feel. It's green. Keyboard has reasonable feel. It's not, wow, wonderful, ThinkPad level, but it's perfectly good, considering the fact that it's waterproof and all that sort of thing. Not bad. Two-button trackpad is really retro, quite small on this. I guess that's what a mouse is for. Now to get inside this thing, well, there's latches on the bottom everywhere. You can slide the modules in and out, as you can see. Like I said, the big bay is for drives, basically, because they need the fastest data. The side modules where the I.O. are, you can interchange any set of modules you want. We have Ethernet on board, Gigabit. If you need two Ethernet ports on this, you can do that via modules. If you need RFID, if you need the fingerprint scanner, if you need a smart card reader, all of those things can be swapped in. So battery life is going to depend because you have one built-in battery and a 68 watt hour, but you can double that with, well, hey, the battery module and double that to another 68 watt hour. You get the idea. So they claim between, I think, 11 and 22 hours of battery life. And then, you know, optimistic certainly depends on where you set your brightness level at, especially if you have a thousand nit display. If you're using it outdoors, probably not so much. But suffice to say that thanks to the dual battery modules here, you're going to get pretty long battery life in the field. It should work for a full work day for most people, I would think. So that's the Panasonic Toughbook 55. Again, for some of you, this was pure entertainment and educational. For others of you who are working in IT departments and you do have some folks you need to deploy into the field, well, maybe you found something you could actually use. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.